you are looking at the site of the United Airlines Flight 93 plane crash in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. This was actually the fourth of the four planes that were hijacked that morning. Uh, this, hi this plane was actually hijacked about an hour later than the other three planes that had already crashed into various uh, targets such as the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. Because of that late hour, some of the passengers were able to call uh, their loved ones, their wives, their husbands, their parents or whatever, and they were informed of what had happened with the other three planes. And they had knew at that point that this plane was not going to be taken down and you know landed and they would be negotiating for some kind of demand. They were going to deliberately crash, crash the plane. So they knew that they had to do something, otherwise this plane was going to crash somewhere. They didn't know where. But they, we believe now that it was going to be somewhere in Washington, D.C., whether it was the capital of the White House. The white wall that you see represents the final flight path that the plane took before it finally crashed. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a small bale of hay that is beyond, just beyond the wall, and that represents the point of the actual impact. And the field that you see represents the, uh, where the plane was, was broken up, because it was, of course, a huge plane. I'm going to take you back to the flight path. Just beyond this hill right here is where the plane made its, was making its final descent into the ground. The plane was going about 550 miles an hour. It's only about 50, 60 feet above the ground. And just above this, uh, this, flow, this field here, and it used to be, a, a, I think it was a coal mine or something, an abandoned coal mine. And basically it took this path and it was making its final descent into the ground. Um, and just past that wall is where it hit the ground and of course there were no survivors but more importantly they did prevent the plane from reaching its intended target of Washington DC which is actually only uh, 20 minutes away from here by plane. It's actually about 400 and some odd miles away but it's only maybe about 20 minutes by plane to get there so these, these 30, some, 30 or 40 some odd passengers saved a lot of lives that day and that's why they're building a memorial to this site here. This is the side, this is the visitor's area right here. These two buildings are basically what right now is a temporary memorial until they get their permanent memorial set in about two months, which is the uh, 10th anniversary of the September 11th attacks. Uh, however, during the, uh, during the, uh, the plane crash investigation, the, plane, the FBI actually had used this building as a, uh, um, as a for their operations, for their Senator 9-11 uh, operations. Or in this portion of the 9 11 operation, I should say. Uh, so it was their command center right there. And that's basically it. I um, mean, it'll be ready in a few months. There'll be a bigger and better memorial, and, you know, starting in this uh, September 11, 2011. And that won't be, there'll be more construction at the end. It won't be fully ready until about 2014 or so. It's going to take a long time to whatever it is they're going to build. They're going to have uh, an exhibit with you know, wind chimes, you know, 40 wind chimes for the passengers, and it'll be very nice, but it won't be fully complete until about. It'll be open on September 11, 2011, the 10th anniversary, but it'll be more construction, won't be fully completed until about 2014. So there it is, and look for that bale of hay. You can see it. And just beyond, just look directly in front of the uh, the wall, directly in front of the path of that wall, and you should see. It. And to everybody who gave their lives on 11, firemen, police, passengers, and may you all rest in peace.